to celebrate with the experiments that I have here. Tiziano Camporesi, spokesperson for the CMS experiments. Tiziano, we made it. Yes. Uh, the new so era Paola, has started. The new era has started. <laughs> there was a moment of great excitement a few minutes ago here. The Big Bang. And now, 13.7 billion years later, here we are in the infinite vastness of the universe, which contains our galaxy, the Milky Way, our solar system, Earth. We're now moving on to point one of the LHC with uh, Alex, uh, Alex Cherry. Ciao, Alessandro. Ciao, Hi. buongiorno. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So before we didn't speak a lot about Atlas. Uh, Atlas is the largest of the four LHC detectors. Can you tell us more about uh, this fabulous experiment? Indeed, it's, a, it's an impressive large experiment. If you have a chance of visiting, if you have had the chance of visiting it while we were in shutdown, it's 25 by 25 by 45 meters. It's the largest of the experiments. It's a huge cathedral of uh, particle physics, basically, and uh, it's one of the two general purpose experiments at the LHC together with CMS, which basically means that we look at, we look at collisions uh, looking for several different phenomena, among which, as you know, the, the Higgs boson that we discovered. Uh, exactly, I was about run. to mention, we didn't mention yet, but we should say well, we <laughs> that uh, this I'm was an enormous discovery. I happen to be on Atlas, but I'm trying to be It was an here, enormous was discovery, and um, did you expect it to find it at 7 TV? Uh, well, we worked hard to find it, of course, you know, the, the, the nice thing about these kind of experiments is that you are really at the forefront, so you can never be sure what to expect. We had hints that possibly in certain conditions, in certain models, the Higgs boson could be there and could be already found at these energies. But, you know. and, and now one wonders, what's next? Why, why bother in going higher in energy? You have the Higgs, you have the standard model, it's complete. What's next? It's complete, but we know it's flawed. And we know that um, there is something else to discover. The question is uh, whether and how much we can discover with uh, with, the, with this next run. Uh, the discovery potential is going to be very, very large. We do expect um, that something could possibly be found uh, in the near future. But no matter whether we find something or not, this is going to be a... Uh, an important piece of information in the puzzle of building a more complete model than the standard model itself. That's what makes it uh, so exciting to go to 13 TV now. We are, yeah. we are jumping by almost twice the order of magnitude in energy. Yeah, I think uh, Alex made Im important points there that the, the, the Higgs boson now, uh, as, we, as we discussed, is, is, is discovery is one thing. Now we have a tool right to, to explore with. I think that's something that, that certainly Atlas and CMS will be will be focusing on in, in the coming years. Definitely it's going to be important to refine and understand more about the properties of this new particle and it's going to give us hints on what could possibly be beyond as well. Because we have some still some very big questions as, as you alluded to. Uh, the, the standard model is wonderful. Uh, it's somewhat complete but there are so many big questions out there and, and one thing that, that has been brought up uh, by, by many people are curious about is this thing that we refer to as dark matter. 
Uh, is Atlas going to be able to, to look uh, for, out, for dark matter? Well, we know that dark matter is there from observing the cosmos. Uh, if we discover new particles, then some of these new particles may be responsible for uh, accounting for this dark matter. So in, in this respect, we could be able to give a, 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 at least a part of the answer to what dark matter uh, is made of. It's, it's quite a special situation, though, that you, uh, before you had hints from a theory. The Higgs theory was extremely precise, and it was a good hint. You didn't tell uh, which energy you would find right. the particle, but uh, it had to be there. Everybody was convinced. Now you have cosmology telling you that there is something beyond uh, the standard model, and that's dark matter. So it's, it's quite a special situation that makes, that it, does it make you feel closer to astrophysics and cosmology? Well, cos cosmology and particle physics are getting closer and closer as they become more and more scrupulous in understanding how the universe works. And yeah, it's definitely exciting. And it's something that we've seen growing in the last uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, so definitely, yes, it's, uh, there is a lot, a lot of, uh, of exchange at this point. And the LHC, is, what's exciting is actually that it is the kind of machine that allows you to explore what you, you know, new physics in a very broad spectrum. It's what we call a discovery machine rather than something that allows you to measure precisely properties of particles that you know are already there. So, Alessandro, thank you very much for being with us. We'll come back to Atlas soon. We're going to leave LHCB now and move on to the ALICE experiment at point two of the LHC. Hello, Alice. Hello, can Hi. you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. I don't have your name. Can you say your Hannes. name, please? Hannes Wessels. Hi, Hannes. And what is your role in the ALICE experiment? I'm one of the deputies. One of the deputy spokesperson, OK. So before, when we were talking to your spokesperson, we didn't dwell too much on the detector itself. We would like to know more about uh, ALICE. We see in the banner behind you, it's called a large ion collider experiment. So you exactly. collide ions. If the machine lets us, yes. yes. So we are gearing it up will, with, the, will. with the <laughs> exactly. So our prime time will be in November, and we're gearing up with the proton beams now, and actually perform important reference measurements for our measurements to come in November. So, so in a sense, uh, this is Steve. Uh, in a sense, you use the proton collisions to to set certain levels to, that you can understand or, or, or calibrate your detector. Well, no, actually, it's it's really physics motivated. So what we want to do, if we collide ions, we want to really study what happens if you have large lumps of uh, quarks and gluons uh, mashed and. Uh, these properties you can only understand if you understand what happens in elementary PP collisions. So everything that we study in when we collide heavy ions, we compare to what is happening if we have a very small system. So we can study the transport properties, how it expands, how it behaves. And this is really the, the goal of our investigations. Mm -hmm. And now, given given the measurements that were made, you, you made some very important measurements uh, during run one. Uh, are there specific goals that you have in mind for, for run two? Absolutely. So, I mean, with the increase in energy and the increase in luminosity, so we will have m much more data. At the same time, you've heard that we've actually used the shutdown to consolidate the detector to be able to take twice as much uh, rate. And uh, through this, we will be able to be what we call much more differential in our observations, really study specifically the transport properties of the matter. That sound, sounds fascinating. You, you're really looking, uh, well, many people describe this as looking at the, at the very early universe. You're, you're, you're seeing the properties of, of quarks and, and gluons before formation of, of protons and neutrons. Exactly. And how this actually expands into the, into the vacuum. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Hannes. I can see Rebecca Suarez Gonzalez at uh, the CMS control room. Rebecca, hello. Can you hear us? Rebecca, we see you, but I don't hear you. Could, could be the same for her. Yes, <laughs> I think she doesn't hear us. Rebecca, hello. 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, oh, that's great. Uh, hi, Rebecca, welcome. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, while we're waiting for uh, uh, beams to uh, be re-injected so. in the LHC, we thought it would be a good idea to discuss a bit about the detectors, the CMS detectors. So, it's okay. What is special about CMS? Tell us how it works and... Uh, <laughs> well, what is special about CMS is that it's compact. We have a, a very big solenoid magnet that is uh, the largest uh, solenoid magnet that has ever been built, but uh, usually operates at uh, four Tesla. And due to having this uh, very big magnet, we can have a very strong magnetic field within the, the experiment, and that allows us to have most of the detectors inside the magnet. Like this, we can be a bit smaller than Atlas, for example, but uh, what happens is that, uh, on the other hand, we are much heavier. So, so this is this is Steve here. I, I have some questions coming from mm -hmm. from across the ring. Um, there's there's a whole lot of things that we all want to look for uh, in in the coming years. Uh, do you do you have a, f a favorite topic of physics that that you think is something that could happen in the coming years with this higher energy? So um, I I do have uh, favorite uh, physics topics for the for the next runs. In particular, I like uh, new physics that uh, involve uh, top quarks and uh, Higgs bosons. I think they are very interesting. The interplay between these two particles, because the top quark is the heaviest quark that we have found so far, and uh, it has it has a very strong relationship with the Higgs and with stability of the universe. So there are a lot of models of new physics that involves uh, top quarks or uh, top partners that I think they are particularly interesting because these kind of things give uh, give nice signatures experimental that are very fun to, to study and uh, they could be a window to many different theories beyond the standard model. Well, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a very important point. It's, it's very interesting physics. <laughs> many, many, I say many people don't really understand that the, the Higgs boson finding it was only our first step. And now exploring it, like you would like to do, uh, looking at its interactions with the top quark, for example, measuring all of its properties, might be our way to find what's beyond this this beautiful standard model we have. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, it's it, I say beautiful, but yes. in, in a sense, many of, many of us would really like to break that standard model and to find out what else there right, is. Right, and out you there. say beautiful, rightly so, because <laughs> we're going to say hello, bye bye to Rebecca now, and we come back to CMS soon. We're going to okay. move to point eight of the LHC, where Guy Wilkinson, the spokesperson for LHCB, is ready to talk to us. Hello, Guy. Hello, I hear you. You can hear, you can hear us well? Yes, yes, you can hear me. Okay. Uh, I hear you a bit, a bit. Not loud enough. Your, your volume's okay. a little bit low. Uh, I, I'll, I'll get our people to work on that. Volume yes, but low. it's un it's understandable. Okay. So we were talking about beauty. What about beauty uh, at LHCB? Indeed, our, our experiment is uh, studying uh, beauty quarks. Uh, uh, our, our goal is to make very very precise measurements, uh, and what we are trying to do is understand the difference in behaviour between matter and antimatter. And a very good way to do this is to make precise measurements of the decays of beauty quarks. So, so you're answering a very profound question, or at least you're hoping to answer a very profound question, which is, which is why are we here? Why didn't we annihilate with antimatter uh, in the early universe? Exactly, exactly. Uh, in the early universe, matter and antimatter were produced together uh, in equal amounts, and uh, now we seem to have matter uh, we only seem to have matter, uh, and uh, this tells us that matter and antimatter behave in slightly different ways, and this is the purpose of our experiment, uh, to learn more about this. And, and the, the B quark is, is especially important for this? The B quark is an ideal laboratory for these studies. In the B quark, uh, there are many CP violating effects, that is matter-antimatter violating effects, which are very well predicted in our theory of uh, particle physics, the standard model. So our, di our purpose is to make very precise measurements to, to try and compare those measurements to the predictions of the standard model. Uh, the standard model cannot explain this imbalance between matter and antimatter at the level we have it in the universe. So uh, we, we know there should be something else out there which is um, uh, driving this, and therefore we hope to see discrepancies in our measurements. Mm -hmm. is, is there a big difference between what you can find in the standard model and what we actually measure? Uh, 
enormous. Uh, the, the standard model is, is many orders of magnitude uh, away from being able to uh, explain the imbalance which uh, does exist in the universe. So, so th there should be a very clear signal. Uh, there are many ways to look at it, but certainly our measurement program is, uh, is uh, one of the most uh, promising. Guy, during the first round, LHCB performed wonderfully. You published a lot of papers. Mm -hmm. You made a lot of fantastic measurements. How is 13TV uh, going to make a difference? For us, the uh, increase in energy is not the, 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 main, uh, the main benefit. The main benefit is the fact that we're going to collect a much larger data sample uh, uh, and our detector is more ready and able to take advantage of this large data sample and we will be able to increase the precision of our measurements. For LHCB, precision is all and uh, the bigger data sample that RUN2 will bring is uh, very exciting from that point of view. Thanks a lot, Guy. And in fact, we are we are we are sharing this we are sharing this uh, with uh, with uh, our colleagues in the U.S., which basically have been waiting now. I think in the middle of the night, we have there's a party ongoing at Fermilab. <laughs> right. So I would like to to, to say hi to them. <laughs> and and uh, okay, it's uh, it's been a great uh, a great moment when we started seeing the first tracks. The, the LHC is back in business. We read yes. on the LHC page one. <laughs> Absolutely. And CMS has started recording data. Uh, these Absolutely. data are going to be part of the season two data lot. <laughs> yes, that is uh, <laughs> season two data lot. Yes, CMS <laughs> the revenge. Yes, CMS, there is CMS <laughs> is back <laughs> as well. It's really <laughs> you can see we are preparing even things for a better celebration of things. So, so. Okay, ah, we, that's oh, great. we wait uh, for we you at the that. CCC then. <laughs> what what yes. will it take to open that, Tiziano? What, well, what discovery will it take? Uh, no, this is to celebrate the restart. Okay. And we have plenty in store for the, for the discoveries. But uh, <laughs> yes. uh, are you making a wish, uh, Tiziano, for CMS? What's your best wish for the season of 13 TV physics? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's basically uh, taking data steadily now and hopefully not to wait too long for uh, being very excited about uh, if nature is kind with us. It's very, very good. And, and in fact, uh, I'll tell my Atlas colleagues that, that we, we can come on over to CMS because they have champagne. Is that, is that right? <laughs> well, uh, better, better hurry because it <laughs> might be over soon. <laughs> I suspect we have our own bottle. Okay. So what's the plan for the rest of the day, Tiziano? Well, for the rest of the day, I think uh, uh, we are planning to continue to take data, of course. Uh, this data is going to be already useful for some of the very, very first measurements uh, uh, physics measurement at LHC and uh, I think uh, as I say we are going to have a little celebration around here. Fantastic well congratulations on, on taking the data and, and and the race is on now we're gonna see who can get the best results uh, be before the next conference. Yes. So that's our goal. Okay. Good luck Tiziano <laughs> with this new hunting season for CMS and we go now to LHCB a point eight. Thank you. Ciao Paola. Bye. Guy Wilkinson, hi, welcome back. We made it. We have collision with stable beams at 13 TV. We did, it's remarkable. Yeah. We're very pleased here. Right, so do you feel like a hunter entering a new terrain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, uh, a new well, unexplored season or an astronaut you, landing I'm on a new planet. I tell you, I, I was here uh, four or five years ago when we had the first uh, LHC collisions. That was very exciting. But in some sense, uh, today is even better. And that's because we, we now know what our experiment can do, how well our detector can perform. Uh, and, and so the, the potential of this new run is ever more exciting. Um, you have a nice refined day. weapon in your hands. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, so now that we, we've gone up to higher energy, this is the highest, well, almost the highest energy that we're, we're ever going to achieve for, for the LHC, at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, the next step, in, and for three years or so, will be increasing the luminosity, creating more and more collisions, which will allow us to do uh, even more physics, and, and as you mentioned before, to improve the precision of our measurements. That's right. As you were asking me that question, uh, this is a... A bottle of champagne was open behind me. This is a very uh, high-quality LHCB glass. Let me just... <laughs> cheers! Excellent. Cheers, to LHCB! Toast, toast the uh, machine and everyone around. Uh, but, but 
But indeed, there, there, there's uh, much to be done. Uh, uh, what, what is important for LHCB is not so much uh, the um, energy, but, but the increase in the, the data volume we will get. Uh, we want to make precise measurements. Precision is, our, is, is the name of our game, and this next run pr promises uh, great advances in that term. Excellent. Thank you, Guy. Let's move on to point two, interaction point two. Alice. Hello, Alice. Hello, Paula. Who is he, who is speaking? Eve. Hi, yes, Eve Schutz. Speaking. Eve, deputy spokesperson of the Alice collaboration. How is it feeling now at point two? Well, we almost already entered the, the routine business now. Uh, almost it, routine. Yeah. Celebrations are over already. Celebration You're is over. and making, our, <laughs> <laughs> making ourselves ready to have... Uh, to be ready to take uh, the best data uh, we, we can. Well, we, we, we saw bottles of champagne opened over at CMS and, and, and at LHCB. Alice is, is, is in work no, mode. They have coffee there. No alcohol in Alice. We want to keep clear mind. <laughs> <laughs>